I mean, this is the neighborhood that we grew up in. It's the neighborhood we're raising our kids in. Yeah. It's the church that's influenced us and now is influencing our kids. Jay Smith and his wife Sandy met here at Cedar Park Church in Bothell, Washington, when they were only three years old. You might say they were least likely to succeed as church leaders. My intention from the very beginning, really, of serving the Lord as a young man, I just, I just sensed and knew that God had put a desire in my heart to go into ministry. Growing up, I never wanted to, to marry a pastor because I grew up in a pastor's home. The lures of teenage love and dating in their senior year was not a good combination. We were teenagers in love and uh, you know, I thought she was really attractive and probably didn't pay attention to some boundaries that I should have. Well, lo and behold, uh, Sandy ended up getting pregnant and it was, it was kind of a shock to, uh, to us to our families, really to everyone. I can still recall sitting on the back porch uh, talking to her dad, who uh, was my pastor. I think I bought 10 pregnancy tests just praying <laughs> it was wrong. They were all positive and I just remember sitting on that knowledge and knowing I was the only one who knew, you know, for a couple of days and just um, praying that something would change. This is actually our backyard. With the support of Sandy their families, Jay and Sandy went ahead and planned a quick wedding. We got married at 18 years old, the summer after we graduated from high school. And our daughter, Talia, was born uh, that next, what would be March. She was actually five pounds, eight ounces. Getting pregnant outside of wedlock, is that a mistake? When you see the child that is born as a result of that mistake, I'll just say it right now, if that's a mistake, that's the greatest mistake that I've ever made in my life. Our daughter is such a beautiful, uh, she's, she's an amazing young woman, and we're so proud of her. And when we look at her, there's no way that we could ever come to the conclusion that she was a mistake. With family and a church that is unapologetically pro-life, their decision was a beautiful one. Let people know that your child is a miracle and a response and answer to prayer. And 20 years later, Jay is senior pastor of Cedar Park Church. When we found out that we were pregnant, being unmarried and pregnant. I just thought that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. There's no way, that's, those aren't the types of people that God uses. Today, Pastor Jay and Sandy set the tone for Cedar Park Church as a thriving community that welcomes and loves all people. You know, I think the greatest thing that we can do to foster and encourage this culture of life is to just be kind to people, to be kind to people. I just know how much it meant to us when people were kind to us when we felt like they shouldn't be, when we felt like we should be judged, people were kind to us. Cedar Park has a long history of protecting life because they believe that that's what God requires. They do that through providing support for moms with unexpected pregnancies and single moms. They also offer encouragement and support for foster care and adoption. And in their K-12 education program, they teach biblical principles to students about why we protect life from conception to natural death. But in March 2018, Washington's governor signed into law SB 6219. This law requires pro-life churches to violate their religious convictions about life and have their employee insurance plans fund abortion. Cedar Park Church believes that abortion is not health care. What we are defending and standing for are the rights of people of faith to not be forced into being complicit uh, to something that's inconsistent with our faith. The church's health care insurance is intended to protect life and to help mothers who are welcoming a new baby into the world, not to end life through abortion. We distinctly do not cover abortion uh, because it's, a, it's the antithesis of who we are as, as an organization, uh, what our beliefs are, how we live out our faith. And the cost to not obey this law? A violation of this law would not only mean the church would face fines, but actual prison time. Alliance Defending Freedom is standing with Cedar Park Church to preserve the church's freedom to operate according to their faith without being threatened by the government. This bullying by the state of Washington is such an extreme intrusion, not just on individual rights, but on the church itself. Every one of our employees are aware of and sign our statement of faith uh, upholding and defending the teachings of Scripture that tell us that life uh, originates from God. It's important to challenge this law because the government should not have the power to force people to pay for abortions, let alone a church that has a religious conviction that life begins at conception. 
we desire to be able to, yes, stand on our religious liberties, but also to be a beacon of life in the community for every woman, whether they're women of faith or just women who find themselves in difficult places for whom the people of God can be a part of the answer for them.